Hello and welcome to episode four of season two of Anime Kiwi. I'm Mike. I'm Katara. And we're starting a new show this week. We finished Kids on the Slope last week, and now we are starting Chihaya Furu, an anime about card games. A card game, a specific card game about poetry. A very strange card game. It is very strange, isn't it? Yeah, it's like Snap for Aristocrats. Yeah. Let's see if I can't drum up some information here on when this game originated. I cannot actually find a date when this started. Um, but the poems... So this is about Karta, uh, Utagarta in specific, which is a game in which you match the first verse of a poem with the rest of the poem, and it takes poems from a collection known as the Ogura Hyakunin Ishu. And let's see if I can... Find the one. hundred poems or something like that. Yes, uh, hundred poems from a hundred poets. Uh, so each poem in here is written by a different poet. Um, it is quite. Fuck, I can't remember. I think it's probably from around. I'm not finding a date here, but uh, reaching back into my classical Japanese education, I want to say it's from probably 1100. And what period is that? Uh, that's about the Heian period, which is the period that I'm most interested in, uh, the high art period of Japanese culture, which is about roughly 800 to 1200-ish. Well, it would make sense for that to have emerged around that time then. Yeah, I don't know when uh, the card game, when... Karta came into being, uh, but it is what bes besides the the competitive side, which I don't know when that started. It is uh, a New Year's tradition to play this game. It's a strange tradition, I guess. I uh, well, New Year's is a big thing in Japan. They have lots of different New Year's traditions. But yeah, I'm seeing here uh, the Hyakunin Ishu poem collection was put together by Fujiwara no Teika in the Heian period. So yeah, I was right. I just don't have an exact date for you. Well, now I'm disappointed. I know. If anything, I'm disappointed. I should have known that. I'm positive I knew at one point. Well, you don't know now. So I don't know now. You don't know. But anyway, uh, the card game itself... Uh, seems a lot like Jazz did in Kids on the Slope, where it's just a mechanism for the character interactions of the series. Yeah, it uses a similar structure, I guess, in, yeah. in that it, way. It is a lot slower paced, but it also has twice the episodes that Kids on the Slope had. Well, I would argue that the pacing is actually... Uh, I wouldn't say faster paced than Kids on the Slope, but it's a lot more like hyperactive. Oh, hyperactive, you'd say? Yeah, I, I kept getting a really strong sense from the show. Like, people are yelling a lot and running around a lot and everything, and it just seemed like a really hyperactive show to me. And, um, I mean, as you know, I find stuff like that kind of a bit tiring. Mm -hmm. I think it's also uh, kind of interesting contrast, because this is a high school thing set in the modern day, and Kids on the Slope was set in the 60s so if i feel like maybe it's just differing in the time and place where it's taking place for lack of more eloquent wording I, i'm not even sure what you're trying to say so yeah that is a pretty lacking in eloquent wording i'm uh i'm trying to say that now things seem like they're faster paced than they seemed in the 60s, and especially since it's taking place in an urban atmosphere and Kids on the Slope was also rural, that that kind of accounts for the change in pace. I, I mean, more in the sense that, like, the main character, I, uh, Chihaya, or whatever her name is, mm -hmm. she's, like, 
pretty much constantly yelling. The titular character. Yeah. There's there's pretty much never a scene in where she doesn't yell pretty much constantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I can't I can't justify that besides saying the kids are loud since the first three episodes were a flashback to them being in elementary school. Yeah, which weirdly they spent a long time setting that up with the uh the the kids period of them, you know, learning this game and becoming attached to it. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know why they needed to spend an hour on that. Uh, I think they were just trying to make sure that the relationship between those three characters and why they're being separated and partially coming back together is a big deal in episode four. Yeah, I guess. But it just kind of seems like they're kind of treading water for a, a couple of those episodes. I didn't, I didn't feel like it was treading water. I just kept thinking to myself, like, get to the point. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I read a lot, uh, I read some forum stuff just to see, get an idea of when most people thought this hit its groove, and I saw a lot, I saw in the first three episodes a lot of people saying, okay, we're done with the, we're done with the flashback, let's get on to the, the present day stuff here. And from what I've seen, the series hit its groove around mid-episode 4, beginning of episode 5, so we're just about where it should start picking up, according to most people. Yeah, I'd be interest- interested to see where it goes. I mm-hmm. think, at the moment, uh, I'm not really not really super attached to any of the characters. I mean, I quite like the main character, just because she's kind of... she's nice. <laughs> But she, she's a nice teenager. Like, they've yeah. focused the show on a character who's almost always a very positive person, and mm-hmm. I kind of like that. Mm-hmm. I, I, when they said that she always says the first thing that comes to her mind, I'm like, that's a, that's a trait Cat Dodder likes in his girl characters. Yeah. I mean, uh, any... I guess that's more of a philosophical thing with me. I, I think, uh, like... In society, there's kind of a, a pressure on women to kind of filter what they say and what they think. Mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, in, in any women or, or even characters on a show, if they speak their mind, I'm, I respect that much more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that the main three characters in this are pretty likable in their own ways. Especially Chihaya, though. She's, she's a cool girl. Yeah. So, this series is a lot more straightforward than Kids on the Slope was. As far as I can tell, from these first four episodes. Uh, in what sense do you mean by straightforward? The What's going on each episode is doesn't feel like it's as complex, I guess. So like the interpersonal relationships aren't quite as nuanced? Yeah, from the first four episodes, I feel like I took a lot less notes with this than I did Kids on the Slope. Although I'm... Maybe it was kind of up last late last night, or I don't know. But it feels like it's more upfront about what's going on with everything. I'm not yeah. sure why I feel like that. Maybe it'll manifest differently. We'll see. We're only in the first four. There are 26 episodes. We've got five more weeks of this. Hooray. Uh, but as we alluded to earlier, episode one, we meet uh, Chihaya. Chihaya Ayase, who is a first year in high school and trying to start a card club. But no one wants to join. Um, and we see her putting a bunch of flyers up. And we also see people around the school uh, rushing to go see her because she's the sister of a famous model. Or a model, I guess. I don't know if she's famous. I forget. And then... She's putting flyers up, and a teacher scolds her for wearing track pants under her skirt. So she is uh, not a girly character uh, that establishes, I feel, right? I don't know what the hell that whole deal is. Uh, It just come off really strange to me. Maybe it means she's kind of aloof, I guess? Or she's she's not a normal high school girl. Well, she doesn't really care for, like, social norms and stuff. Yeah. As you would put it, she is not generic anime protagonist. Yes, which I like quite a bit. Uh, and then she... I forget where she meets him, but she meets a friend from her elementary school at high school. Was it in class that she finds out 
to go to the same school? She's lying on the grass in the shade, listening to something on like an iPod, and then he... He pops you know, up. Yeah, he pops up. And then she starts talking about if he's heard from someone named Arata, and then it goes into a flashback until the beginning of episode four. And we see them in elementary school, and there are a bunch of mean kids led by her friend Taichi, who just snuck up on her in the present day, and they're making fun of him because he's from the countryside, and they're being real mean. Yeah, they're like kids say, it's actually a pretty accurate representation of how much like kids can be little dickheads to each other. Yeah, they were they were little shits. They they weren't they weren't cool little kids. Um. Uh, so people are picking on him, and Chiaya starts to start defending him, and eventually she goes and gets very defensive about him, telling him to knock it off, and they're outside when this happens in the rain, and they both get pushed over, so they go to his apartment to dry off, and she learns that he is very good at competitive karta, like borderline amazing probably is what we were meant to think from it. Yeah, he's they're trying to establish that like as soon as he hears like the first syllable, he's pretty much right on the card. Mhm. Earlier in the episode, they established that uh Chihaya's sister is she's been in beauty pageants and stuff and she's trying to become a model and that uh Chihaya is basically her sister's biggest fan that she is super psyched about her sister starting to be successful in fashion and modeling. Um, so while they're at Arata's house, he asks her what her dream is when they're after, I think it was after they played Karta. And she says, oh, my dream is to see my sister be a successful model. He says, no, that's not a dream. A dream has to be about yourself. And my dream is to become a Karta master, which is the name of the top ranked male Karta player in Japan and thus the world. Like Meiji or something is the word they kept using? Yeah, Meiji means master. Yeah. Uh, they have the rank of Meiji in Go. Uh, they prob- they th- think they probably have it in Shogi, too. Um, and it's also the name of a brand of chocolate. Cool, I guess. Yeah, sure. It's a, it's a word. It means master. Um, and it's used in multiple games to denote a high rank, high skill. Uh, and then I... Th- I think that episode ends with her pondering what her own dream might be. It was kind of strange. Like, the the episode ends on her, like, all happy that she discovered somebody else's dream or something. And I was like, that's weird, I guess. This is a... This girl's kind of strange. Mm-hmm. Oh, it also uh, starts... I think they mention how she doesn't know all the cards. And he pulls one out. Or he hears her name uh, is as being Chihaya, and he pulls one of the cards and says that the first verse that goes with that card is Chihaya Furu, and that's where the name of the series comes from, that that card. But then goes into episode two. I thought episode one was... I thought it was fine. It was, a, it was a solid start. It establishes those three characters as kids real well, a baseline for them. Yeah, I mean... When it, when it was over, I just kept thinking, like, there's nothing special about this, but it's cute, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very, it's pleasant. Yeah, cute's probably the word I'd use for it at this stage in the show, at least. Yeah, I think it especially shows a good uh, character jumping off point for Taichi, because it starts him out as a little shit here. Yeah, he's been a real bastard. And there's got to be some transition for those three of them to be good friends, and I would hope more development when they we get back to the present day. They're, they're almost sure there has to be, or else they've done all the character development in the first three episodes, and that'd be crazy. Yeah. I, I assume, similar to Kids on the Slope, that most of the time uh, the show will spend, you know, most of its time on character development rather than the game or whatever. Yeah, I've heard that this show is uh, does a lot of character work and does most of it very, very well. Um, but then we get to episode two, where uh, Chihaya goes to school and everyone is ignoring her just like they ignore Arata. 
and Taichi's being a little shit again, and is leading them, ignoring the two of them and making fun of them. And if it if it wasn't clear at uh, before, it is super clear now that the main reason he is doing it is because he is jealous of Chihaya paying attention to Arata. Yeah, and he's been a little dick about it, and yeah. you know, he should get punched in the back of the head. Yeah, uh, but so there is a car to tournament at the school, for I guess they had a, a test of memorizing the Hyakuni Nishu, and the people who got 100% participated in a, a car to tournament at the school. Uh, I forget how it goes about. If they do, they push him or something so that he gets all dirty. Uh, what do you mean? I I forget how we get to the point between the car to tournament and Arata needing to go clean and taking his glasses off. Oh, uh, yeah, I forget as well. Yeah, but there is a a tournament, and Taichi was talking big game, uh, not realizing that. Arata's like already a card master, and they get to the final match, and it's between the two of them. Um, and something happens, I forget what, that causes Arata to need to go wash off, and he puts his glasses on the windowsill, and Taichi sneaks over and steals them. So, what ends up happening is they get back to the match hall, and Arata leans in real close and memorizes where all the cards are, and, uh, plays based entirely off of memory until Taichi gets the idea to be even more of a shitty little cheat and switches where the cards are. So Arata can't remember. He gets it wrong. Is that actually against the rules in Karta? I don't know, but it seemed like a shitty cheat thing to do. Yeah. I I think... Like, with him memorizing where all the cards are, and there's a scene earlier on, I think, in the first or second episode, where they show him memorizing an entire list of, you know, addresses for people's uh, newspaper to be delivered. Oh, yeah. They they did establish that in the first episode, that dude has yeah. a killer memory. So I think they're trying to establish that he's got, like, a photographic memory or something. Yeah, or Ident- or Identic is photographic. Uh, total recall, yeah. at least. Good-ass memory. Better than I got. But anyways, uh, since the cards are moved around now, he can't, he can't play blind. Um, so Chihaya steps up and uh, convinces the teacher to let her substitute for him. And she plays, I'm not sure if she's playing dirty or if she's just playing super aggressively, I don't know. But she manages to beat Taichi despite only knowing half of the poems. I think the interesting thing with the way that she starts playing the game is that she's not technically breaking the rules, but she's doing stuff that would screw up the other player and mess with him. And is unconventional. Yeah, so it's kind of like when you're playing a game or something and you start to see strategies that that are outside of the game's rules and mm-hmm. figure out things that you can do to screw up other players and stuff. And Yeah. It's, uh, it's cool. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting way to... Established that she has a kind of knack for the game. Yeah. And I I forget if it's at this point or when she steals a card. Or I, Did she steal a card when they were playing in his apartment, the first one? But I forget. At one of these two points, uh, this is when Arad's like, oh, she's kind of a natural at this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I forget where it is as well. It's all kind of a jumble. Yeah. But after she wins, she calls home. And her mom's like, where have you been? There's a scout, a talent scout here recruiting your sister to be a model. You're playing some dumb card game at school? Come home. You don't need to do that. So this is uh, kind of cementing that Chihaya's family situation is kind of shitty. That they don't really seem to care too much about her. Or at least not compared relative to her sister. They don't care as much about what she's going on. Yeah, she tries to tell her sister about winning the, the the car game and everything, and her sister's a real dick about it, just hangs up on her. Yeah, she says, oh, that's boring, why can't you just be, uh, be in awe of me all the time like you used to be instead? Yeah, which is kind of a fucked up thing to say to somebody. Yeah, it's a real shitty thing to do. And then we have Taichi's mother, who is filming the tournament, and uh, scolds him for losing, and... 
tells him not to do things that he's not sure he can win at because she can't show his tape to his dad now because he lost. Yeah, this this show does a good job of establishing that kids are little dickheads, but that adults can also be total assholes as well. Yeah, but then Taichi is upset in the hallway about his mother scolding him and also losing, and like yells at him that he shouldn't be crying because there's nothing wrong with losing a fair fight. Then she goes to continue looking for Arata's glasses because she still ha- they still don't know where they are, and Taichi goes. And returns them, and fesses up, and they they kind of make up, I guess, because they're they're kids. They're not gonna probably hold a grudge, or at least they're, yeah, yeah. He kind of opens up to him, I guess, because he starts crying. Yeah, but they seem they seem kind of cool now, and then they go look for Chihaya, and then they, I forget what happens. They go look for Chihaya, and she jumps on them. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Uh, Arata says that it's. He basically says that it's okay, but he calls Taichi a coward for stealing him in the first place, but that he understands why he doesn't want Chihaya to know about it, that he stole the glasses. Kind of basically both of them acknowledging that Chihaya is cool, and they're not. <laughs> yeah. But the the episode ends with them all being a kind of cool little three-kid group. Um, so episode three. Episode three, we see... The three kids go to the practice session for a card to society. Um, they see some some adults playing. It's, it's a fair number of people, right? Yeah, there's like 15 people in there or something. Not bad. Uh, and they meet the guy in charge of the card society, Dr. Harada, uh, who's very excited that there are three kids interested in Karta. He says they have a couple tournaments a year. And they only see like one or two new members out of both of those combined. So to have three pe- three kids show up at basically out of nowhere is uh, he he basically he breaks into tears and hugs him. He's a weird dude. He's a weird dude. He's a nice dude though. Yeah, he seems like a nice. The people in this seem like generally pleasant people, at least the the main characters, except for Tai Chi when he's not being a little dickhead. Yeah, he. He starts growing out of that in the second episode, though. Yeah, thankfully. It In these first four episodes, you see a, a decent amount of character growth already, which is nice. Yeah, it does pretty it does pretty well with character development yeah. uh, early on. Mm-hmm. But he, uh, Dr. Harada directs the three kids over to three other kids who are already in the society, and they play a three-on-three Gimpei match, which I... It means that they are all uh, acting as one, basically. And basically, Arata writes up a strategy for the other two to follow, since Chihaya still doesn't know all the cards. And Taichi's just not super great at the game. He's slow. Uh, and he basically uh, sets them up to do the best they can at it. Uh, but when they get to the game, he's basically playing the uh, three the three people by himself and Chihaya and mainly Taichi are like oh why are you even playing if he doesn't trust us to work as a team and over the course of the game they realize that it's not that he doesn't trust them to play as a team it's that he is filling in to succeed if they don't do as well does that make sense that was torturous <laughs> yeah it just took a while to get out yeah, I'm. Tr- I was trying to trying to figure out how to say it good, and I didn't. Oh well. But yeah, he was. It wasn't that he was uh, quarterbacking. It was that he was sweeping up. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting way to to frame that match because, I mean, they were taking it personally that he was basically playing for them. But mm-hmm. when they realize that he's just trying to, you know. He's just trying to win the game, but he's still relying on them to uh, help him out. It's just that he's so much quicker than them that you know. Yeah, but it was it's kind of cool. Yeah, and at the end of the end of the match, Chihaya got her Chihaya card. Or no, it wasn't the Chihaya card she got. It was that she like heard the beginning of a syllable before it even left the mouth of the person reading it, because they established. In the episode before this, that she has, like, super hearing. 
Um, and then I think Taichi got a couple cards. Um, and we also learn at this point that Arata is the grandson of like a legendary car to master. So that's why he is like ungodly good at it. And then uh, it's it goes forward a little bit and they're getting ready to compete in an upcoming tournament for sixth graders. Um, but before that, uh, they find out that Taichi has been accepted into like a super prestigious middle school. And even worse, that uh, Arata's card to master grandpa is very, very sick and that he's going to be moving back to Fukui Prefecture, the, the country place where he's from. Uh, when the both of them, so they're all going to be splitting up at the end of the school year. And Chihaya is not happy about this at all, which is understandable. Yeah, man. She wants to hang out with her friends. Yeah. At some point earlier, they I think they like made a pact or a promise or something that they'd stick together and play Karta forever, I guess. And that was already being split up. Uh, so the other two go to the tournament, and they leave a package at Chihaya's house. And it turns out they made some team uniform things. And their team name is Chihaya Furu. And Chihaya is, uh, she realized that she was being kind of selfish by ditching them. And they go to the tournament. And this is a different kind of team tournament. This is basically two team members have to win their matches for the team to win. And uh, the long and short of it is that Arata, unsurprisingly, is the only one who wins his match, so they're eliminated. But Chihaya is... Uh, the, the only really notable thing besides that is Chihaya is matched up against a kid named Nishida, who Arata says was, I think, the second place after him for the national championships. But after the tournament, it's the last day of school, and Chihaya says that as long as they have Karata, they'll meet again, and then the episode ends. Yeah, and uh, I, I've spoken about this before, I, I think, with Kids on the Slope, but there's kids tend to think in the whole friends forever thing, but, you know, being adults, you realize that people drift apart and friends forever isn't, it's not really realistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, And this show does a kind of good job of showing that life gets in the way of that sort of stuff. Yeah, but also from what I've seen uh, in Japan, there seems to be a little bit more of an emphasis on uh, trying to maintain your peer groups to some degree throughout life. Probably not as much uh, at this level of school as like high school and college, but I feel like there's a bit more of an impetus to not let these... Uh, these bonds dissolve completely, like what generally happens everywhere, not only in the West, but a lot mostly in the West. Because, like, I barely talk to anyone from even college, which is only a few years removed. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't talk to anybody I knew at high school or anything, which was a long time ago for me now. Yeah, it's getting there for... Uh, it's. I think I'm almost at my 10... Is the 10-year graduation, is the 10-year reunion, do they have those in Australia? Reun no, it, it, reunions aren't really a thing in Australia. Okay, because I was going to ask if like the those are based off of when you entered or when you left. It must be when you left. That doesn't make sense when you entered. It's your class reunion. It makes more sense for it to be left, but I've, yeah, it's been like 11 years now since I was in high school. Yeah, I'm almost, uh, I'm at eight now, and I'm not, I'm not going to a reunion because I don't. I didn't have any friends then. I don't, let alone now. Yeah, I I had quite a large group of friends, but they're all complete dickheads. Like in a, in a in a fun way, but you know mm -hmm. they weren't they they weren't smart they weren't smart or uh you know cool people in a lot of ways. Yeah, all the people that I uh, hung out with in high school were also like two and one years above me, so they wouldn't be there anyways. So. What's the point? I had a, I had a, sh I had a shitty fucking time in high school. That's because kids are, as I keep saying, kids are dickheads. And I went to an all boys school, and boys are, boys are more of dickheads than girls for a lot of the time at that point. Well, I don't know. When it comes to emotional torture, uh, 
girls can be pretty fucking savage. They can. But boys get worse when there are no girls around. Yeah. Yeah. High school is not a good time for me. I see people reminiscing about high school. I'm like, what are you on about? Get out of here. You're dumb. Yeah. I mean, high school is shit. I think anybody I think anybody would agree that it's mostly pretty shit. Yeah. But anyway, on to episode four. Uh, we're finishing up the flashback here. The three of them promised to meet again. Uh... I think they said that they would meet again. Ooh. You okay there? Yeah, I just burped. Please don't die on the podcast. Ugh. That was the sound of me dying on the podcast. Oh, okay. It's kind of underwhelming. Uh, but they uh, they promised to meet again, and then they, they go to say goodbye to Arata because he just kind of bounced after graduation. And then they, Chihai and him play one last game. At his apartment, and he's he's talking his big game that he does, that he has the right to do because he's good at the game. And he's like, oh, I'm not going easy on you, just so you know. I wouldn't go easy on a baby. And then Chihaya manages to take a card from him, and she take. this is when she takes her Chihaya card. And then Arata starts breaking into tears, and then that's when they declare that they will meet again. By the power of Karta and the heart of the cards and all that stuff. And then the flashback's over. Was that a Yu-Gi-Oh reference? That was uh, two Yu-Gi-Oh references. God damn. And then we're back in the present day. And uh, we find out that Taichi has a girlfriend now. And she is not happy about that. For some reason. For a reason. Not not super sure on what it is yet. I, I mean, there's always, like... The idea that she likes him, but they haven't really displayed that. Yeah, they haven't established that at all. Like, yeah. not even a little bit. Yeah, so if that's a reason, it's on the back burner. But he he says that he's not interested in doing a car to club in high school. He's probably going to do soccer. And then she says, hey, I made Class B over spring break. And if I win this tournament on Sunday and make Class A, you've got to help me form the car to club. Uh, so Taichi goes to see her play, and Dr. Harda recognizes Taichi immediately. Uh, Affectionately calls him Eyebrows. Yes, that's his, that's his nickname. He's Eyebrows. And he, at some point, tells uh, Harda that he doesn't have a dream of becoming a Meiji anymore, because he realized that no matter how much he played, he could never surpass Arata. And to that, Harada says that Chihaya nev- never gave up on Karata. She's still super passionate about it. And that she played all through high school, even though she joined track, which she said, I think in the first episode, that she only joined to meet people because no one at school was playing Karata. Yeah, and like the the, the starting gun reminds her of the game or something? Because of the, the bang noise or something? Yeah, the the feeling of having to go... Right when you hear the starting gun reminds her of having to reach out to get that card right as you hear that first syllable. Um, but she plays a tough match against a guy who's been trying to get Class A for a few years and is really good and has the ability to to do it. He just hasn't manifested it. And you kind of... Part, part of what I like about the series is trying to piece together how this game works, because they never explicitly tell you. Would would you say there's kind of an, an assumption that you've played it, or at least understand it? Maybe that you at least understand it, because like I said, it's a, it's a thing that some families play on New Year's. But I wouldn't expect, like, everyone to know how to play. Because, like, as we saw in the second episode, Chihaya didn't know what she was doing when they were at that tournament. She had to keep asking the teacher, oh, is this something you can do? Oh, you can't do that? Oops, my bad. Maybe uh, the competitive version isn't really well known? Yeah, so I feel like the idea is that you have at least, you definitely know that it like, exists, and maybe have an idea of how to play it, but I don't think the expectation is that you know how the game works. Uh, but yeah, I like trying to figure out from what's going on in the show, how this game works. Yeah, from from what I can gather, it's just, you know, when you hear the the second uh, line or verse or whatever, mm-hmm. 
and you, you smack away the card. As long as you remove the correct card from play, you can kind of swap more than one card away, which is a, a weird rule, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, I think it was in the flashback, they established that uh, once you put the cards down, you have 15 minutes that you can spend however you want. It's meant for memorizing which cards are where, so you can slap faster. Um, this episode seems to... It gave me the idea that you can, that you, the players, can choose where you put your cards. Because Dr. Harada said that the guy she played had near perfect card placement. So I'm not sure what that means. But. And they kept passing that Chihayafuru card back and forth, which I don't know what the deal with that is. I think, I feel like there's something in the tournament that if you slap the wrong card, you give. One, you put one of your cards on the opponent's side. So I feel like if they're slapping based just on the first syllable, they're going to be uh, hitting the wrong card a lot. So they're they're trading that card back and forth because he said that uh, he knows that's her favorite card. So he's going to take that before and break her spirit. So she was giving him that card uh, with the risk that he would take it because... Everyone, like the doctor says, that that's her best card, too. She never misses that. She knows when that card's going to be called. But yeah, I have fun trying to figure the game out. Uh, it's kind of uh, similar to... You listen to the McElroy shows, right? Uh, very, very occasionally. Okay. Because uh, Griffin has one he does with his wife about The Bachelor, which I don't know if you know what that is. I'm familiar with the TV show. Okay. Uh, so I've never seen the TV show. And uh, I list their podcast is great, and in part because it's an insane thing to hear about if you have no idea what how the show operates. So I'm that's another thing where I'm listening to that, and I'm just trying to piece together how this insane garbage television works based on their descriptions of it. So kind of like, uh, have you listened to the worst idea of all time podcast? I have. At all? It is. It's exactly like that too. Yeah, trying to piece together the movie without having watched it. Yeah, there's it's a it's a special kind of joy that comes from that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm sure by the end of the series we'll be, you know, we'd probably be able to play the game, but I can't read Japanese, so I probably can't play it. Uh, even if there's an English yeah. version, I have a set somewhere, but I didn't. I don't know how to play it because the rules are in Japanese, and I don't feel like sitting and translating that. Before we get back to the show, I should mention that. Uh, Griffin McElroy's Bachelor fan cast is called Rose Buddies. It's very good. I recommend it. He did not pay me to say that. I wish he did. I wish he'd just notice me. As we keep saying, we'll sell out at a moment's notice. All you have to do is notice me. Griffin McElroy, my hero, my r life role model. Senpai. My senpai. But anyway, she high wins the match, and she makes Class A, and she goes outside to where Harada and Taichi are. And it's like, I made Class A. I can call Arata and tell him now. I guess the, it's assumed that they haven't talked since they split up because she's waiting to make Class A to call him. It's part of the pact or something? Yeah, I guess. And then she calls and he says not to call anymore, that he stopped playing Karta. And everyone's like, what? And then the episode ends. And I think it also ended with uh, Tai Chi agreeing to start the club at the high school. I think that was in there. If not, it's almost certainly going to happen, because why wouldn't it happen? There's 22 more episodes of this season. Yeah, I, I think at one point he remarks about how, like, he forgot how fun it looks. Yeah. Uh, their super, super intense match. I, I think it's pretty amazing how they make this super mundane, esoteric game pretty intense. Well, they were talking about how... Uh, like the doctor was talking about how like a Corrida, um tournament can last like twelve hours and it, it, they're so intense that you'll lose like three kilograms of body weight throughout the match. Yeah, yeah, because they have. I think he said they can play like as many as seven matches in a day, and they have to memorize seven different board positions, and they have to like make sure that they restock on calories and fuel and stuff or else they're like going to do very bad physically and mentally yeah i mean 
if you're familiar if you're familiar with how the uh, the brain uh, you know uses energy and burns calories and stuff like that, you'd know that something that mentally ta- uh, taxing is going to actually use a shitload of calories. Mm-hmm. At at one point uh, after I think it was the first match of the tournament. Harada tells Taichi, oh, she gave the chocolate sign. Get the fuck to a convenience store right now and buy her some chocolate. And then it's closed, and they have a definitely not Godiva store there, where he gets some expensive chocolates. Yeah, there's like a strategically placed uh, uh, branch covering the rest of the, the name. Yeah, so he, he brings Chihaya some Godiva chocolates. I haven't had a Godiva chocolate in a long time. I don't know what that is. It's a... Uh, I think it's French? Maybe Swiss? Could dive a chocolate here. Belgian. I was close when I said France. Kind of. Yeah. It, they speak French there. Well, close enough, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, founded in Belgium. Headquarters is now in Belgium and New York, okay? Yeah, they're expensive, nice chocolates. Kind of trying to establish that he's willing to spend that money on her, I guess. Yeah. That was these first four episodes. I think it shows some some good promise so far. Uh I think this episode shows it starting to find its groove. Yeah, I, I'm i pretty positive on it, but as I mentioned earlier, that considering, like, it's a, it's a loud show, I guess mm-hmm. is the best way to describe it. It's kind of constantly trying to hit, like, a melodramatic peak, and I find that a little bit tiring. Um, I'm not a big fan of, you know, overplayed drama or overplayed... Uh, melodrama. It's one of the reasons why, you know, in the few times I've attempted to watch the uh, that reboot of the Doctor Who series, that I just kind of bounce off it because it's so fucking melodramatic. It's also but it's also just bad in other ways. It's not good. Yeah, it's it's not a good TV show. But I don't understand. I don't understand how so many people watch it. Unironically, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's one of the mysteries of the universe. Yeah, it's weird. Whatever. They like what they like. As long as they're not trying to make me like it. I think some of the character work and some of the, uh, you know, the writing, it's it's strong enough to make me, you know, continue to engage with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if I'm I'm not in love with the series or anything like that, but I, I think, you know, promise is definitely a good word for it. Yeah. Um, and like I said earlier... I don't hate it. Yeah, it's... Like I said earlier, though, it's twice the length of kids on the slope so it doesn't have to be like bang 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 plot point plot point it has a bit more space to stretch i guess even if it is going loud and fast paced it's taking longer to develop things on the overall yeah i mean this show will live and die based on the strength of its character development yes if it if it kind of spins its wheels and and doesn't really execute on that then that's when i'll probably bounce off the show but uh, for now, it's doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, uh, if it does end up doing not good things, it is not in this first half because I would I don't look forward to the possibility of watching a bunch of episodes of something that one or both of us aren't enjoying. Uh, I'm I wouldn't worry about it too much. Like even yeah, if I don't like the show, uh, I'm like. I might play it up sometimes, but I don't mind watching something that I'm, uh, you know, not enjoying completely. Yeah, and I have I have it on the opinion of people whose opinions I trust that it is, it doesn't do that. So, well, like I'm one of those weirdos that if if I hear something is bad for an interesting reason, then I kind of want to see it even more. Well, yeah, I do that too. Like the Dragon Ball live action movie is a piece of garbage. But I like that movie because it's bad in interesting, hilarious ways. Yeah, I've never really been like a so bad it's good kind of guy. Like I, I don't find the room funny at all. If you've seen that, I have not seen that. I've been meaning to, but I haven't gotten to it. I just find that stuff kind of torturous to to watch. But like a recent example would be like the Angry Birds movie. Apparently, is full of like anti-immigration like subtext <laughs> and. It kind of makes me want to watch that movie even more because that sounds really terrible in a kind of an interesting way. Hey man, that movie has pretty killer pee joke in it. I don't know if you've seen the trailer with the entire pee joke in it, but it's a pretty good pee joke. Well, I don't know. Like I was watching the trailer and 
they it gets to a point in the trailer where they want to go find the eagle to to figure out how to get ready uh get rid of the the pigs or whatever and i i was like you know this isn't even subtle like when i was talking about anti-immigration stuff like they're going to see an eagle which is obviously supposed to represent you know america or whatever Mm -hmm. to get rid of the you know the immigrant pigs i was like fuck this and i just turned it off yeah but then they go to where the the eagle lives and they see his big lake and they go and swim in the lake and they start drinking the water in the lake and shooting fountains of water into the other bird's mouth from the lake and they look up and see the eagle and he's peeing into the lake because that's how birds work it's a pretty good pee joke that wait so they gave each other golden showers and everything uh yeah they did it's a water sports joke it sounds less like a pee joke and more of a fetish i'm not uh i'm still not entirely sure if it was actually a good pee joke i don't think anything about that movie is good i like pretending it's a good pee joke though it's it's a funny goof. Yeah. I'll give it a C plus. Even a bad comedy can have a good goof. Yeah, so I find myself it's a digression, but I find myself wanting to watch the Angry Birds movie just to see what the fuck even happened with that thing. I might watch the Angry Birds movie. Not def- absolutely not in theaters, but Yeah, me neither. I'm not gonna spend money on it. I don't see most good movies in theaters, let alone bad ones. Yeah, like, unfortunately, the only local theater in my area is, like, a shitty chain theater, and they only ever play, like, the big blockbuster stuff. They mm-hmm. never play anything that's small or interesting. Yeah, well, I have a, I have a dog that can't be left alone, so I don't want to have somebody look after him every time I want to see a movie. Sometimes it coincides. That's how it was when uh, my girlfriend and I went to see Zootopia, but Zootopia was a cute movie. Is that the one with the rabbit that everybody wants to fuck? Yep. Yeah. I'll think I'll... Stay away from that for now. It is a good movie. It is it? It was, uh, in my opinion, the first uh, 3D animated Disney movie that I wholeheartedly enjoyed. Does Pixar count in that? Not counting Pixar. Although I don't like a whole lot of Pixar stuff. At least the newer stuff. Slash haven't seen a lot of the newer stuff. Uh, have you seen Inside Out? I have. Inside Out was good. Inside Out is actually excellent. Like it, Yeah. I, I thought that was quite a bit. way better than I was expecting. Yeah, uh, but a lot of the newer stuff besides that I don't care for or haven't seen or have any interest in seeing. Well, like Cars 2 or Dinosaurs? Well, I haven't seen those, but like I haven't seen Up. I have no interest in seeing Up. Oh, Up's great. You should actually watch that. Eh. Trust me. Like If that if that movie doesn't have you, uh, like if it doesn't get its claws in you within like the first 10 minutes and I turn it off, but... I somewhat doubt that uh, that you'll bounce off it. It's a it's quite a good movie. We'll see. I have it is not high priority by any means. Yeah, but if you find yourself bored for two hours and you've got yes. access to Netflix or something, I'd uh, I'd give it a look. Hmm. Um. I it seems I'm bound by fate to never see all of Wally because I have gotten halfway through that movie two times and then something has called me away for the duration of the second half. Well, you've seen the better part of that movie. The first half also didn't grab me. Well, you've seen the better half of that movie anyway. And I, I couldn't tell you what else they've come out with besides those two. Besides the Toy Stories and the Monsters, Inks. Yeah, I think the only thing, they're, like the only movies they've made that are worth actually seeking out uh, recently have been, you know, Inside Out and Up. That's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. I like I saw Monsters University and I like that because I like Monsters, Inc. But that wasn't one of their movies that's... Like, trying to be, like, a, a deeper thing, I guess, or a more emotional thing. I like their fun movies, basically. Well, uh, Up's pretty fun. It has maybe one of the uh, most dramatic openings to a movie that I've ever seen, but, like, it it kind of uses that uh, in an interesting way, and there's a really good goof with a uh, dog with a collar that uh, translates, like, what it's thinking. Uh you know, it's a funny goof. Okay, we'll see. But anyway, uh, that is episode four of season two of Anime Kiwi. As always, you can send us an electronic mail at animekiwi at... No. 
It's uh, anime at GameKiwi.net. You can also find us on the Twitter, at the Game Kiwi, or on the Facebook, at Facebook.com slash the Game Kiwi. We probably have something else. I think we have a YouTube. Yeah, we have that. Uh, YouTube.com slash Game Kiwi. And we do? Yeah. Um, and then this and all of our other podcasts can be found at podcasts.gamekiwi.net. Wow, I am off this housekeeping session. I don't know why. Um, and then we're also on iTunes as PodKiwi. Uh, please, please, please rate and comment and review and whatever there. I don't know. I don't go on iTunes. I don't know what they have. Please do all the good stuff there. I think it helps our rankings and helps other people find us. Um, yeah, increase our SEO or yeah, whatever. Yeah, be our buddies. Anyway, that'll do it. Next week, we will be talking about episodes 5 through 8 of Chihaya Furu, and I'm looking forward to seeing where this is going. Yeah, hopefully the show calms down a bit. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it, at the very least, hopefully it uh, maintains or increases the quality that it is currently at. Yeah. But anyways, I'm Mike. I'm Katara. Thanks for listening, and as always... Keep it anime.